Hello friends, in this vent with a sweeping shot high above a beautiful, verdant rainforest tree line. Jake Sully, in the movie Sam Worthington, a disabled war veteran and former Marine, appears in a series of intercut images. Series of intercut images. He awakens on a massive sera, a densely forested Earth-like moon orbiting Polyphemus, a massive blue planet similar to Jupiter. Planet similar to Jupiter. He is one of several passing nearly six years of cryosleep en route to Pandora. He's handled by the ship's staff as he drifts out of his sleeping pod in zero-g. Being pod in zero-g. Sully T is written on his l- Jake reveals that he has a deceased twin brother, Tom, a scientist, who was to be a part of a high-level study of Pandora's environment and population directed by corporate and military planners. And military planners. Because Jake and his brother was offered a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to take up his brother's contract with a corporate military organization and go light years away to Pandora, a previously unknown. A previously unknown. Jake, who is now beat to Pandora, is one of many soldiers and civilians due to land on Pandora, which is 4.3 light years away from Earth. 3 light years away from Earth. As Jake mulls over his niece and its development, as well as massive mining machinery digging up the Earth in a big, digging up the Earth in a big. The passengers are all told masks because the planet's atmosphere will not support human life. 20 seconds of exposure to the planet's deadly atmosphere produces unconsciousness, with death occurring 4 minutes later. Occurring 4 minutes later. While the other passengers exit onto the base, which is known as Hell's Gate and is surrounded by a massive perimeter fence, the other passengers disembark and take their first steps onto the base, which is known as Gate. Which is known as Gate. Jake, in his wheelchair, gain the nickname Meals on Wheels from a few snobby Marines. Through voiceover, he admits that he lost the use of his legs during one of his tours of duty on Earth, and that while a spinal injury, and that while a spinal injury, while flying on a hunting soar, suddenly pursued and attacked by a creature known to the Navi as Toruk a giant and brightly colored flying mountain banshee with murderous intentions toward everything that flies. Natiri says its name means last shadow, the Toruk's shadow, once seen, is usually the last shadow one ever gets to see, as its attack is almost always fatal. Back at home tree, Natiri shows Jake the skeleton of a precursor of the present Toruk. She tells H. She tells H. While on a hunting Natiri are abruptly pursued and assaulted by Toruk, a large and brightly colored flying mountain banshee with homicidal intents toward everything that flies, a creature known to the Navi as Toruk. The Toruk's name means last shadow, according to Natiri, because its attack is almost always lethal, and once seen, the Toruk's shadow is usually the final shadow one ever gets to see. Natiri returns to home tree and shows Jake the skeleton of the Toruk that predates the current Toruk. She tells him that her grandpa's grandfather was the last person to ride a Toruk and that he used the beast to bring the five Navi tribes together in a time of tremendous sadness. And a sadness. The title Toruk Mato would be bestowed upon such a person when Jake returns to his human form. It's evident that this new encounter has affected him because he explains, out there is the actual world, in here is the dream. The colonel approaches him and informs him that his assignment has been completed and that he will be returning to Earth the next day. And, true to his word, the colonel has set up Jake's treatment such that he can regain use of his legs. Jake wants to postpone his departure because he claims he's about to be inducted into the tribe and acknowledged as one of them, giving him the authority to negotiate with the Navi about relocating. The colonel agrees to it. Jake attends a Navi ritual and learns that the Navi believe that everyone can have two births. Natiri takes Jake to the Tree of Voices, a site of devotion where they utilize their cues to form a relationship with the tree. Jake is, to- Jake is told by Natiri that he can construct a bow out of the tree, and that he can pick a woman. Jake informs Natiri that he has chosen her, and she responds that she has chosen him as well. Jake wakes up at the lab after sleeping together under the tree. Natiri is startled awake in the morning by fallen trees and bulldozers. As the forest crumbles around Natiri, who is dragging and carrying Jake to safety, soldiers advance. Jake is getting set to connect with his avatar at their remote location, and when he wakes up, he jumps aboard one of the bulldozers and tries to stop it, breaking its camera system and attracting gunfire. Other Navi warriors arrive, and the colonel identifies Jake in his avatar form as the guy who attempted to thwart their mission when examining films back at the base. The bulldozers are still at work, destroying the sacred...
Trudy dupes her guard by saying she wants nothing to do with them, only to knock out the guard an instant later. As they flee the base, Grace is shot and wounded by the colonel. Jake is an outcast, an alien. They believe that if they destroy the Tree of Souls, the Navi will go away and never come near this place again. Jake, as Tarek Mato, tries to send a message to the Sky People that this is their land. Before she dies, Grace tells Jake that she has seen Awa. Tsuti will be the new clan leader and will help rally other clans to fight with them. Jake and his Tarek, Tsuti, and other warriors engage in battle with the military aircraft, mainly Scorpion assault ships. Natiri appears and tells Jake that Awa does not take sides after hearing his plea for help from the Navi. Suddenly, through what's left of the surrounding forest, a battalion of Titanivers, Pandora's heavily armored dinosaur-like animals, arrives and engages the Earth forces.